I have recently caught the dreaded Rolex red sub disease where I just really needs me a red sub. Unfortunately, they cost about as much as a small aircraft and uh, instead of making a uh, divorce inducing expenditure and buy one of those things, I thought I would look around and see if I could find something in a reasonable price range, something that I could afford. And I found the uh, Certina DS Action Diver, uh, managed to get it from Joma Shop for $550 after discounts and whatnot. And for an ETA movement, that's pretty darn good. A little about the Certina Company. They started making watches in 1888 under various names, but in 1939 or 40, they became solely Certina which is based on the Latin word certus, which means um, certain, fixed, settled, firm, resolved, determined, and sure, as in sure-footed, I assume. They became important in dive watches relatively early, 1959 or 60. The first modern dive watch, the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms, was in 1953, so not bad. In the mid-60s, the Certinas were worn during the Sea Lab 2 underwater experiments where astronaut Scott Carpenter spent 30 days in a habitat 200 feet down, as well as the Tektite 1 and 2 where saturation diving was tested and divers spent months in habitats under the water. I remember seeing Sea Lab on the television. There are a few good things for being old. I watched the moon landings, too. In the 80s, Certina joined what was to become the Swatch Group. Omega did, too, for that matter. In 2017, Certina became a partner of the Sea Turtle Conservancy, an organization that has been working since 1959 and aims to ensure the survival of sea turtles and conserve its habitats in the Caribbean. Well done, guys. Good job. Okay. Let's climb into our diving bell and take a deeper look. This advanced diver is rated at a tidy 300 meters water resistance and actually complies with ISO 6425 standards, um, which is a stringent set of tests that each certified watch must pass. If I was a saturation diver, someone who gets way down in the murky deep, I think this would be pretty important. In 1959, Certina really beefed things up with their DS double security line. I will link to details below uh, what that double security is about. But I think the most important features of it are the two O-rings on the crown and the third on the stem. Uh, makes me think if you fell in the pool while setting your watch, the worst that might happen is you need to dry out your wallet. Probably shouldn't test that, though. At 300 meters water resistance, I consider this a deep water watch. It is sized like a deep water watch, too, with a diameter of 43 millimeters, and with the bracelet, it weighs in at a beefy 188 grams. That's 16% more than my Seamaster, which is 163 grams. It is 13.2 millimeters tall, not too bad. The lug span is 51 millimeters, but actually wears bigger since the solid end links protrude, making the effective lug span 57 millimeters. For some reason, they made the band size 21 millimeters. Not sure what they were thinking there, but since I'm pretty stoked about this bracelet, which I will expand upon in a minute, I'm unlikely to have to do a maddening search for an odd-sized strap. This watch is super readable with a very nice 31 millimeter diameter dial. Just for reference, my Seamaster is 30 millimeters. The generously sized applied markers and well-sized hands help. The bezel looks very traditional except for the unusual dots and dashes edge which does not offer superb grip, but is a little better than the old Omega Seamaster bezels. I don't find it too hard to use. It is good and solid. Sadly, it's only 60 clicks. The loom is Super Luminova BGW9 and is PDG. Pretty darn good. 
Here is a time lapse of the loom performance with my Seamaster as a reference. The markers are not as bright, but I'd say the Certina hands are on par with the Omega, and they actually may stay a little brighter longer. Unfortunately, the bezel pip pretty much disappears at the end of seven minutes. The crown is a good size, comfortable, and engaging the threads is smooth and solid, no complaints there. Now the movement has that fantastic 80 hour power reserve that really sets the watch apart from most other affordable watches of any kind, let alone divers. You can get a Blanc Pond that does 80 plus hours, but they are way expensive. The Certina Powermatic 80 movement is a mm, super modified ETA 2824. To double the standard power reserve, they slow the movement down from 28,800 beats per hour to 21,600 beats per hour. You might notice the second hand is less smooth as it pulses at six jumps per second rather than eight. I don't notice the difference, personally. Lowering the beats makes the watch slightly less accurate because any jostling of the balance takes longer to recover, although I'm not sure that means that much in real life performance. Reducing the speed of the movement theoretically should increase the lifespan of the movement. The next big thing they did was reduce the diameter of the barrel arbor, allowing for more space for the mainspring to tighten. More energy on the spring means it can uncoil over a longer span of time. I'm not sure if they used standard or a longer mainspring. If you know more about that, please let me know. I hear there may be changes to the escapement to reduce friction, but I don't know what changes those might be. If you know about anything, any details about this, please put it in the comments below so that we can all learn and appreciate it. I was pretty disappointed when I got this watch as it gained a whopping 48 seconds a day. I thought it might have gotten magnetized, so I broke out the compass. Nope, not magnetized. However, once regulated, the watch is within a second a day. It seems to lose about four seconds a night face up on my dresser, but then it gains them back while I'm wearing it during the day. On the wrist, I find the watch is large, but not actually too large for my seven and a half inch wrist. The curve of the lugs and the form-fitting bracelet make this very comfortable. The only negative I noticed is that it is heavy enough that I can feel its kinetic energy when my wrist gets jolted or shook. But the watch doesn't shift on the wrist, so it doesn't really bother me too much. Even though the movement is hidden by the wonderfully carved back, this is a nice looking movement. Very clean, with a cool black rotor and prominent blued screws. Kind of a shame it is hidden. As for the back, I'm a big fan. The proportions on the turtle are a little strange. But the matte background really makes it stand out proud. And hey, who doesn't like turtles? I like this watch so much that I've had a really tough time trying to leave it on the dresser long enough to test the power reserve. So far I can verify that leaving it on my dresser for a full two days, it was still running. It is true, I am kind of a fan of this bracelet. The thing is really solid, but also flexible. And this micro address, uh, adjustment thing is just awesome. Uh, solid and very cool. 